Now we are on to life cycle models in software engineering. And as we have discussed earlier that we are going to see few revolutionary and marked models. So first is classical waterfall model. And this classical waterfall model, it divides the life cycle into phases. As we know that uh, life cycle means different phases and uh, in between various activities are being carried out and they have uh, proper exit and entry criteria. The first one in classical waterfall model is feasibility study. Then we have requirements, analysis and specification, followed by design, then coding and unit testing, integration and system testing, and finally the maintenance part. Waterfall model has, uh, you know, actually extracted its name from a similarity or uh, some sort of uh, similarity between the waterfall, actual waterfall in real life and in its workability like you perform feasible, uh, feasibility study their requirement analysis followed by design coding testing and maintenance so water is falling like this okay and water cannot go back water cannot move back because of gravity this shows that the requirement analysis cannot be redone if we are on design phase Requirement analysis is once for all done. This is the relative effort of requirement to maintenance. The phases between feasibility study and testing, we call them as development phases. And among all these life cycle phases in classical waterfall model, maintenance phase, it consumes the maximum effort. As it is evident, from this bar chart that requirement specification takes very less effort while maintenance consumes the maximum effort. Testing phase again in uh, development phases in terms of development phases this testing consumes the maximum effort. So between feasibility analysis and testing if we consider testing it consumes the maximum effort. Various organizations, they try to define standards on the output that, that is deliverables which is produced at the end of every phase. And again, let me reiterate that entry and exit criteria for every phase is defined. And they also prescribe certain methodologies for specification, design, testing and project management, various other things are also involved. The guidelines or the policies or the methodologies for an organization which is called as organization software development methodology, this one. So software development organization, they want or they, they would expect fresh engineers, the, the freshers to master the organization software development methodology. What about this feasibility study? Feasibility study, the main idea or the aim of feasibility study is to determine whether the development of the product is financially worthwhile. Means, where we are uh, try, trying to assume the, the economical part, then is it worth to make the software? And second, if financially worthwhile, we also have to check whether it is feasible or not. We put in a lot of money and technically it is infeasible. Then we roughly understand what the consumer is expecting from the product. Means different data which would be the input of the system, what processing are to be performed on this data, what output data the system is going to produce and certain constraints on the behavior of the system. So what are the activities during feasibility study? First is overall understanding of the problem. Problem not understood or misunderstood will lead to a product failure or project failure. Then what may be the strategies to solve? So we formulate the strategies. Then examine alternate solution in terms of what? Maybe required, the resources that may be required, the cost which is involved for development and the time, the schedule, the development time. 
then we perform a cost benefit analysis cost benefit analysis why because we have found various solutions or various modes can be uh, taken up to solve a particular problem so which one is the best for that we perform cost benefit analysis and you may also determine that none of the solution is feasible maybe because of cost maybe because of the constraints of resources or some technical reasons then comes the requirement analysis and specification part what is the main key of this phase or the aim or the idea first to understand the exact requirements of the customer and then to document them then to put them in ink black and white so we have two distinct uh, activities first is requirement gathering and then analyzing it and then specifying the requirements that is requirements specification what are the goals what we are going to achieve after requirement analysis first to collect all related data from the customer and then analyze the collected data to clearly understand that what this customer is expecting if any incompleteness or inconsistency are there we need to find out here itself and then we need to resolve them just by finding these problems um, is not going to work we have to resolve them also then comes the requirements gathering part gathering the relevant data which is relevant usually collected from the end users maybe uh, with in person means uh, talking to them having discussions interviews just for instance a business accounting software all accountants are interviews they are interviewed to find out their requirements their uh, thoughts what they would require and then the data you initially collect maybe from the end users they may have various contradictions and also they may be ambiguous so may contain ambiguities so each user typically has only uh, a complete or a partial idea of the system or a view of a system so these ambiguities and contradiction must be identified and they need to be resolved by sitting with the customers discussing with them then the requirements are organized in certain form of document which you call as software requirement specification so engineers or software people doing requirement analysis and specification they are known as or they are termed as analysts software analyst because they are performing requirement analysis then comes an important part which is design often well thought well planned well managed it has to be design phase transform these requirement specification by the analysts into a form which is suitable to implement in certain programming language if we talk in general terms but in design we talk in technical terms so during design phase software architecture is derived from the document software requirement specification documents software architecture is derived there may be uh, two design approaches first first is a trivial or traditional approach the other may be object oriented approach which is uh, mostly followed traditional design approach they have two activities like structure analysis and structure design structure analysis activity what it does it will identify all the functions to be performed and identify the data flow among these functions the processing stations and then decompose each function again and again that is recursively into their sub functions and then again find out or identify the data flow among the sub functions likewise what about structure analysis these are carried out with dfds data flow diagrams and after this completion of structure analysis we carry out structure design first is architectural design we call it as high level design or the next one will be detail design or low level design what is high level design and low level design or detail design high level design it decompose the system into modules and represent invocation relationship among the modules means finding out the modules or decomposing the system into different modules and then finding out the relationship which this module they uh, have between uh, one another then detailed analysis what it what it contains or what we what do we mean when we say detailed and design different modules design they are designed in much greater detail so data structures and algorithms for each modules they are designed here the data structure and algorithm parts come then first we identify in case of 
object oriented design we have just discussed about the previous uh, trivial or traditional approach but in uh, design which is object oriented we first try to identify various objects that is real world entities which are there or which are present in the problem then of course once the objects are found are found the relationship among the objects is to be ascertained just for example or an instance a payroll software may have object as employees managers payroll register or departments and there are various others so object structure that is again further refined to obtain the detailed design this object oriented design has various advantages it has lower development effort lower development time and then easy to maintain so better maintainability then we arrive at implementation part here the purpose of implementation phase also known as coding and unit testing phase so we perform coding and unit testing here itself so here we try to transfer our design into actual source code so translation of source design into source code is what we call as implementation and in this phase implementation phase each module of design is actually programmed or coded then each module is unit tested tested they may be independently as standalone unit and they may be debugged and then each module is to be documented and why we are you know pressurizing or emphasizing on unit testing because we test if individual modules they work correctly independently and the end product of the implementation phase would be the set of program modules that have been tested individually or unit testing has been performed thoroughly then comes the integration and system testing part integration and system testing part so different modules are integrated in a planned manner well organized manner and modules are almost never integrated in one shot not once means they all are not combined in um, you know in togetherness so normally integration is carried out through a number of steps one combined with second then third and likewise a grouping of modules can be done and during each integra integration step the partially integrated system is again tested like this we made a module the second one the third one and the fourth one this is how we combine them then comes the system testing what is this system testing when all modules have been integrated properly and tested then we perform a final testing which is called a system testing this is a system testing why we perform system testing just to ensure that development or developed system functions are according to requirements as specified in the srs document then comes the part which is taking the maximum effort which is our maintenance part so maintenance of any software product it requires much more effort than the effort to develop the product itself okay the development effort to maintenance effort is typically in the ratio of 40 to 60 we have various type of maintenance corrective maintenance perfective maintenance and adaptive maintenance what is this corrective maintenance it tends to correct the errors which were not discovered during the development phase perfective maintenance we try to improve the implementation of the system or try to add up enhance functionalities to the existing system then what is adaptive maintenance we port software to a new environment that is to new computer or to new operating system so this is adaptive adapting to the present scenario so this was about uh, our the basic classical waterfall model and we'll be covering other model shortly thank you so much take care